Welcome to Technically Speaking with Hank Preston. In these short videos, we'll look at some bit of interesting network engineering, automation, or some other topic that I thought was worth diving into. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can influence forwarding behavior with policy-based routing. And for those of you studying for a network certification, policy-based routing is part of the CCNP enterprise implementing Cisco and Enterprise Advanced Routing and Services, or the ENRC, ENARSI exam. It's also part of the CCIE Enterprise Lab Exam Blueprint. So let's dive right in. All right, so in order to influence routing behavior, we need a network that we're going to influence. And that's where this little whiteboard drawing of a simple network I've put together comes through. So what we can see is here in the middle, I've got a kind of a, a five router network made up that has OSPF configured to allow traffic between the two networks. So I've got a LAN at the bottom, I've got a LAN at the top. And so OSPF has been configured specifically to prefer just the single path straight through the network from R1 to R5. And I've done that by setting the costs on the interfaces. And so the cost between R1 and R3 and then R3 to R5 are the default kind of cost of one for gigabit ethernet interfaces. But the costs from R1 to R2 or R1 to R4 have been increased to 100 and 110 uh, respectively. And so that means traffic from H1 to H3 will flow from R1 to R3 to R5 and then over to H3. Now what we wanna do is we wanna influence that behavior. Instead, we want traffic to go from H1 to R1, to R2, to R5, and then over to H3. Now the reason we wanna do this could be any number of potential reasons that you might have to send traffic in a particular path. Perhaps over here on R2, I have some special security filters that I wanna make sure that I'm monitoring this particular type of a traffic for a reason. Or maybe there's quality of service that says that it just makes better sense for our application, this particular type of traffic flow to go that way. Maybe this is backup flows that don't have to be as critical, so we'll send it through a worst cost path as long as the network can support it. The point here is there's lots of reasons we might want to influence forwarding behavior, and now we're going to see how we can do that using policy-based routing. Let's switch over to an actual network and see this in action. All right, so for this demonstration network, I'm using Cisco Modeling Labs to build out that network we looked at in the whiteboard drawing. And so I've got my five routers in the middle, R1 through R5, and that OSPF network. I've got two LANs, I switch one with H1 and H2, host one and host two at the bottom, and then up at the top, switch two with host three and host four. And so we'll start out by taking a look and verifying kind of the initial forwarding behavior that's in place. And we'll do that by looking here at R1. All right, so we'll go into enable mode, and I'll start by looking at the IP cost, the uh, OSPF costs that I mentioned that are influencing the behavior. Show so so show IP OSPF uh, interface brief, and we can see indeed that the gigabit zero three interface, that's the one that goes between R one and R three, has the cost of one while the Gigabit Ethernet 02, which goes over to Router 2, is set to a cost of 100, and Gigabit Ethernet 04, which goes to Router 4, has a cost of 110. And so when I look at the route off to H3, which is uh, show IP route 172.16.10.11, we can see that this route is going to go through 10.13.13.3, that is the R3 interface um, via Gigabit Ethernet 03, and it has that route metric of three because I've got the costs of one, one, and one kind of headed up through R5 or R3 and R5 to get there. And so we can see that that traffic, the, the routing, uh, the forwarding behavior in the routing table is as we would have expected. And now we can verify that traffic path by doing a quick trace route over here on H1. So I'll log in here to H1, we'll clear the screen out, and I'll do a trace route uh, dash N 172.16.10.11. 
And so when I trace this, very quickly we get it back, and we can see that our second hop is indeed 10, 13, 13, 3. That is router 3. So we're going through that as expected. And so now we want to start to influence this behavior. And we're going to do that with policy-based routing. Now in order to configure that over here on R1, there are a few steps that we have to do. The first thing we need is we need to be able to match the interesting traffic, the traffic we want to write our policy about. And like many things in networking, the matching behavior will be done with an IP access list. So I'll go into config mode here, and then we'll do IP access list uh, extended, and we're going to call this the H1 to H3, H3 access list. And so I'll go ahead and say, we'll say line 10, permit IP host. And now the IP address for H1 is 192.168.100.11. And so that's our source. And then our destination will be the host for H3, which is 172.16.10.11. So I've got my access list. That will match the traffic that we need. Now the way that we put that together and then configure our policy is using the construct of a route map. And so I'll go route map, policy based routing, I spelt it right. And then we're going to say permit 10, because we can have many different statements in our policy. In our case here, we're just gonna have one, but we could have lots of different policies to influence our behavior. And so route map or permit 10, and so we'll give it a good description. I'm always a fan of documenting my policies, whether they're in access lists, uh, route maps, doesn't matter. Document it, you'll, uh, uh, you will thank yourself later. So this was going to be traffic from H1 to H3, route through R2. So that's what this is supposed to do. And so we have two pieces. We have to match our traffic that's of interest here. And we'll do that with the match statement. And we're going to say we're going to match IP address. And then if we look, we can see we can provide different types of access lists. I can give it the name or I could give it the numbers based on those. Now, this prefix list that's here is not for policy based routing. It's for when you're using route maps to influence routing or route filtering, redistribution, things like that. Because the route map construct is used for a few different aspects on a Cisco router. And so we're going to stick with our access lists. And what do we call our access list? I'm going to scroll up and remember because I already forgot. That's right, H1 to H3. So I'm just going to copy that. All right, so address H1 to H3. And so that's our match statement. The next thing we want to do is we want to change the next hop router. So the next hop through the routing table is R3. Instead, we want to set IP next hop and then we'll give it the address that we want to set the next hop to, 10.12.12.2. Enter. And that's really it. So if I exit out of these, we can kind of take a look. Show route map. And we can see our route map is now configured. Policy-based routing, permit sequence 10. Our match clause is the IP address based on an access list, H1 to H3. Our set clause is we're going to set the IP next hop to 10, 12, 12, 2. And so far we haven't applied it, so there's been no matches yet. And so our final step here is to go ahead and apply this to the interface that's of interest. Now we have to apply our policy, in this case, as traffic comes into the router. And so we, if we take a look, right, show IP interface brief. My router's configured here with the interface between R1 and S1 up here. That's a trunk interface. And the 01.100 is the one that goes off to H1 because H1, again, its address was 192.168.100.11. And so we need to apply this route map to Gigabit Ethernet 01.100. So we'll do that with config, uh, config T. And we'll go interface gig 01.100 and then IP policy route map. And then we just provide the route map name. And because I've already forgotten it already, I'm going to scroll up and find it. 
Oh yeah, policy-based routing. There's my route map, policy-based routing. We put that in there, and now we have applied our policy to the interface as the traffic of interest is going to come in. And so I can come down here, and now we can begin to kind of verify that the traffic is being manipulated and influenced the way we expected. And we'll start by simply repeating our trace route. I'll go ahead and rerun our trace route. And now look, our second hop in the traffic is through 10, 12, 12, 2. That's the router 2 address. And so we have successfully influenced traffic between H1 and H3 to pass through router 2, just like we were after. Now let's make sure, excuse me, let's make sure we haven't influenced more than just that traffic. What about traffic from H1 to H4, the other host on the same network? If I do a trace route with it, and its address is dot 21, we see that the traffic to dot 21 goes back through R3 because the standard forwarding behavior from the routing table is affected. Our policy-based routing was very specific about the traffic we wanted to adjust. The other thing we can look at is make sure that traffic from the other hosts over here. So we've got the H2 host. And so if I switch to H2, and then we'll go ahead and we will run our trace route to 172.16. Uh, it was 10.11, that's our H3. And so traffic from H2 to H3, again, we didn't want to influence that, is still going through router 3, 10, 13, 13, 3. So our traffic is only being influenced based on the very specific policy that we wrote. Now, the last thing I want to take a look at here is just to take a look at how we can actually debug or look at the behavior of this policy-based routing back on R1. And there's a few show commands and things that we can look at. And so if we, again, we look at our IP, show IP route for 172.16.10.11, so this is the route for H3, we still have it going through router 3 in the middle because that is the OSPF kind of standard behavior. If I look at show route map now, what we can see that we've is that we've had several policy routing matches because it's been applied. So we can see that there's actual traffic that's being influenced on here. Now the other thing that's really useful is that we can do a debug statement to watch the traffic actually as it's going through. And so if I debug IP policy, this will allow us to see the influence as the traffic is flowing through. Now a caveat on this, this is a fine thing to do in a lab, like on Cisco Modeling Labs, but as with any debug statement, be careful applying these on production infrastructure because you don't want to negatively impact your actual traffic flow going through your network. But in a lab, debugs are fantastic for learning. And so I'll turn on debug IP policy, and then I'm going to go ahead and send a single ping, oops, I didn't mean to drag the host. I'm gonna send a single ping packet from H1 to H3 and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna ping count one, 172, 16, 10, 11. And so we sent it off and we can see it was successful. And if I look on R1, where is it here? Uh, there we go. What we can see here are these messages that came through. So we can see that there was a FIB policy match because our traffic match the policy that was there. We can see that it was counted as part of our statistics. And then here's the interesting one. We can see that the traffic, the source and the destination exactly as our policy was set, is being changed to go through the gateway of 10, 12, 12, 2. And it's been FIB policy routed. That shows us the policy-based routing in action. And now to see what it looks like if it doesn't match, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more ping Again, this time though, off to H4. So that one was successful as well. And now when I look at our output here in the debugs, we can see this statement that comes in. The interesting piece is this FIB policy rejected no match. That shows us that the policy-based routing was evaluated, but it didn't trigger and it was normally forwarded as it went through. 
All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Technically Speaking with Hank Preston. I hope you've enjoyed this look at influencing forwarding behavior with policy-based routing. I'll see you next time.